Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Today, we're gonna go ahead and break down a Roku put option that I caught live with the chat this morning. This morning, I was coming into today looking for a push to the upside early morning. Why was I looking for that? Big red day yesterday, and I was expecting some short covering in the morning and also some traders trying to rally along with that push higher early morning. But ultimately, I believed it was going to be a bull trap probably to late morning, maybe to early afternoon, I was expecting that bull trap to come in, some resistance to hit on the NASDAQ and some of these tech stocks to go ahead and come back down. We saw that exact move, we got that bull trap, we started to look for the downside, and that's when I started to look for some positions to the downside early morning. Roku was one that I was eyeing pre-market as well as intraday for rejection as I was seeing a really tough level, a uh, really tough resistance level that hit on the daily chart. So this analysis on Roku started on the daily chart, looked for that downside and used one thing that I added to my charts recently was the previous day closing price. So I used that previous day closing price as a key rejection level intraday to go ahead and enter these puts on. So we're gonna look at the Roku put, but we're also gonna talk about this previous day closing price that I've added to my charts. It's an automated thing that you can add on your thinkorswim charts, and I have found some really good success using it. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Press that like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys enjoy this video, and make sure to press the bell down below so that you are alerted every single time that I go live in the pre-market starting the morning, reviewing some charts, getting you prepared for the day, all starting at 8 a.m. Eastern. All right, guys, so how we're gonna outline this video. First, we're gonna go ahead and look at the actual trade breakdown, and then we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit more about the previous day closing price script that I have that I added to my Thinkorswim. Now, this is a great level to go ahead and watch intraday for either a resistance if we are trading below it, or as a support if we are trading above it. And I'll go ahead and show you some examples of that in today's video on a few different stocks, showing you how useful this is. Now I know you can just go ahead and chart this yourself, but there will be days where maybe you forget to chart it yourself and having it as a script that's automatic where you don't need to do anything can make you realize that it is trading near that level intraday without you actually having to do anything, which definitely has helped me. I previously would write, the, you know, sort of put this line on my chart manually, but there would be days where I'd forget to put it, and then I'd go back the rest, you know, after reviewing some of my trades and say, wow, why didn't I go ahead and trade it off that previous day price? And uh, this is why adding this script has helped me a lot. So we'll go through that, but first let's go ahead and jump into the actual trade. So here on your screen, guys, you're gonna be looking at the Roku daily chart. Now the Roku daily chart obviously has been very bearish. We all know that Roku has been getting beat down and Kathy Wood continues to buy it for whatever reason, I really do not know. But she continues to buy it, which doesn't seem to be helping the stock at all. We continue to move lower. Now, what I've seen recently over the last few days is one, we saw the big NASDAQ sell-off, right? So we saw a big growth sell-off, big tech sell-off, Roku in the crosshairs of that move. And we recently have rejected this level here around 230, 240, right? So 237, 240. What I see here is that there is a ton of wicks to the upside and a very tough resistance level. So we saw that. And on the fourth of this week, we went ahead and dropped back below the 20 SMA. So once I saw that, I was seeing if this thing could go to the downside even more. Now, I did not catch yesterday's move because I really don't like to put on risk when we have an FOMC meeting. But coming into the next day after an FOMC meeting, I like to see if I can catch that continuation. And that is why I had Roku up on my charts all day today looking for that opportunity. So we see this, we see this very bearish move yesterday, and I was looking to see if Roku could actually crack below this 190 level today. Now, why did I have 190 on my charts? It's because it was the previous lows here, right here on, uh, this was 1215, right here, uh, the low of this candle was 190 and 23 cents. So I was looking to see, can we get the breakdown of that level today? We didn't quite get it, but I was had a good entry before that level to go ahead and actually still profit on this downside. So that's where I'm at, my analysis started, looking for that downside. Let's go ahead and jump into the one minute chart. Now, what I'm gonna do now, guys, is I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my set, my strategy set, which includes my VWAP, my exponential moving averages, and the previous day closing price. So I'm gonna use that set and I'm going to apply it to the charts. I'm also gonna go ahead and put the after hours on so we can clean this up just a little bit more. So here was yesterday, obviously great downside move, very big move. Now this is today, this is where my trade occurred. 
Now, what I was looking for was one, a $200 rejection. Now we did move a little bit over 200, but we ended up rejecting intraday. So here is the bull, the bull trap that I was sort of referring to today. You guys can see we got a big push higher in the morning, started to reject this 203, 204 level. Now I did not catch it off this rejection, but this is sort of the move that I was looking for, right? If we go to the NASDAQ, we'll see how we got a push early morning. We'll go ahead and zoom in. We got a push early morning up to around that 15.8 resistance, and we started to reject off of it. We've seen these types of pushes higher, bull traps, and then pushes lower, and I was looking to catch the rejection. I was sort of ignoring the upside in the morning because I felt like it was not going to last very long, and I didn't want to get stuck in it. So I was actually looking today for the rejection of the, uh, of the bull move in the early morning. Now, we can see Roku went ahead and rejected that, that move early morning right here. All right, we can see that move. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the 40 and 105 because it sort of just messes up the chart a little bit, gets it a little messy. So I'm gonna delete that. So we got our push higher and we pulled back. Now the great entry would, would have probably been the breakdown of the VWAP and the 9 EMA. That was a great entry, right? Right here after the rejection, clear rejection, breakdown of the 9 EMA and VWAP, entry around here would have been pristine. That would have been a fantastic entry for this downside. Now, the reason I did not do that it's because I saw that we were trading around this above this yellow level. Now, this yellow level is the previous day closing price. So what did Roku close yesterday? It's going to go ahead and put a line on that price, and it's going to show me where Roku closed the previous day. Now, in my opinion, I do not like to trade downside until I see it break that level because there is still a very good chance of Roku bouncing here and pushing back off that price. I've seen it plenty of times, and I'm sure you guys, if you use this, have seen this plenty of times. And what you can see is there definitely was some support in that level. There was some type of support in that level right here at the closing price of around 196.76. So what I was waiting for was my break and retest strategy, and it just so happened that we got a perfect break and retest of the previous day closing price, turning that support into resistance, and when I saw that right there, that was my indicator that I wanted to look for downside. Now, if you guys are in the live chat uh, on the Discord, then you know we spotted this. We said, hey, take a look at this. This looks like a decent setup. We're going ahead and rejecting the previous day closing price. And that's around where I started to get interested and started to go ahead and take my entry. So I'll go ahead and pull up, first off, my entry, uh, the position that I went ahead and got in, which was right here. You guys can see I got in a uh, two Roku 190 puts for four dollars and nine cents, and I sold them at around, or I got them at 9:45 a.m. Eastern, and I got out at 10:13 at five dollars and 63 cents. So just about a 40% gain on these put options. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the Discord chat where I enter all my trades here for everyone to go ahead and see. Uh, this is when I got in, right? So right here when we started to see this chart, I like to pull up this chart so that you guys can see. Actually, let me go ahead and open original. So this is actually what it looks like, a little bit more clear. I know it's a little ugly with the white there, but here we go. So here is what this chart looked like at the time, right? So if we put this next to uh, next to this, you guys can see we went down, we pushed higher. I saw that rejection right here. And as we started to break these previous lows, I was looking to get in for my put options, right? So we got that breakdown, we got that rejection of the previous closing price, and I went ahead and entered my put options. Uh, as you guys can see here in the Discord chat. So that was my entry, and what I was looking for was that rejection. Now, the next part, the exit, right? The management intraday, the management of the trade, and why did I go ahead and exit? This is also another very key thing that I wanna review in this trade. So we got the downside, and I continued to trust this move until we broke above the 9 EMA. Until we broke above the 9 EMA, I was comfortable holding this trade. So we, we moved lower, Nice. We pushed back into the 9 EMA here, rejected it once again, started to push back into it again, but we continued to see that rejection on the 9 EMA. Now, we started to move lower, and around this period, around 190, I was pulling up the level 2. I was pulling up the level 2 to see if there were buyers stacked up at that 190. 190, remember, if we go back to the daily chart, was that level that I spotted some previous support at, right? So if I pull this up, you guys can see we recently found support at 190, and I was being careful 
of trading Roku into that level because I figured there would be some buyers in that level. If it was previous support, I would assume that there would be some buyers in that level once again. Now, as I pulled up the level two around this area, we started to see the bid stack up at 190 and the buyers were definitely strong. So you guys can see if I pull back up my trades, my exit was right around uh, 1013. Now, 1013 is this candle right here. This is the 1013 candle. And the reason I got out is because we broke above the 9 EMA. And I also realized there was a double bottom. There was buyers at 190. This was a daily level support. And that was it. I wanted to take my profits there, lock in my profits. I did not want to mess around with this daily, daily level support and this 190 level uh, that started to show some buyers stacking up. So that was my trade. Happy with the exit, happy with the entry, very patient, waiting for that breakdown uh, that I was expecting intraday or middle uh, early morning. And I really liked this little catch that I got right here. Made about $314, $305 around there, uh, about 40%. I focus on the percentage points. I know some of you guys out there focus on the dollar amounts, but I focus on the percent. If I can catch a 40% move, if I do that again with $10,000, that's $4,000. So it's all about scaling up. It's all about percentage point wins. And this was a great win to the downside of 40%. So that was my trade today on Roku. Let's go ahead and run over this, this uh, previous day closing price just a little bit more. Let me go ahead and first start by showing you guys how to add this onto your screen. So what you're going to do is you're going to go up to studies and you're going to go to studies and create. You're going to create that, and here you're going to see this little data thing here. You're going to delete that, and you're going to paste this code into the screen. So right here, that's what you're going to go ahead and paste in. I'll go ahead and put it in the description below for you guys to go ahead and copy-paste. Go ahead and name it Previous Day Closing Price, and uh, you will go ahead and add that to your studies. Now, what you're going to do after that, you're going to find it here on your, uh, on your study list. Previous Day Closing Price, that was mine right there. And uh, you will go ahead and adjust it just a little bit. So we're going to go to settings and you're going to want it to look just like this. You're going to want to change the draw as to these little lines. And then, of course, the width and color that you please. So that's how you add it. Feel free to pause this video, you know, figure out how to add it yourself. That that is how you do it. So I want to go ahead and now show you some examples of how this you, this tool could have been used today. If we go to Tesla today, let's go ahead and take a look at today's price action. And what you're going to see is look how perfect Tesla rejected off of the previous day closing price. Look at this line. Now, this is an automated line. I can't touch this. This is uh, yesterday's closing price, and it goes ahead and draws a line into today. Look how perfect Tesla went ahead and rejected that level. I think it probably is at the exact cent. This level is at, uh, let's see, it, this level, can I see the actual, I believe this level is around 108, 1,088 and one cent. And the high of this candle was 1,088. So this was basically at the exact level where Tesla rejected. And you guys can see that could have been a great tool to go ahead and use today for a Tesla downside play. The next one that I wanna go ahead and show you is Qualcomm. Qualcomm today, another great example of how to use this, this, how to use this uh, tool. You can see how Qualcomm rejected off this previous day closing price multiple times today. It did break above it. It did find some support off of it intraday. You guys can see, this is why I don't like to play puts before it's down below it. Because if you played puts here, maybe you got a little bit shaked out here as you've started to find support off that line. But ultimately, look what Qualcomm did. It broke down, it retested the previous day closing price, and then it went ahead and dropped. And the rest of the day, we rejected off that level multiple times. So that is just a very powerful line to have on your charts. The last one I'll show you is Apple. Apple, another great example of a rejection at the previous day closing price. You guys can see we pushed higher, started to get very heavy in this area, and then started to break down. Now, of course, it's not going to be an exact uh, level. It's going to be more of a zone. And you guys can see that that zone definitely went ahead and rejected today. I could go on for hours of examples of this all across the stock market, but feel free to add this to your charts. Go ahead and take a look at it. Get comfortable with it. You don't need to trade off of it the first day, but start to get comfortable looking at this level because every single day you come into the market, there is some type of reaction to the previous day's close. It almost always occurs and you'll be able to find some really good setups if you pay attention to it and maybe you try to integrate it into your own trading. So 
that's what I have for you guys. I hope you did enjoy the video. Roku Play, yesterday's closing price, showing you guys how to add that to your screen, giving you some examples of how to use it, some examples of it working out uh, You know, after the fact. Obviously, we're looking at this in hindsight. You're going to have to learn how to use it live and while it's occurring, but that is all a part of the learning process and gaining experience in this market. So, Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let's go ahead and wrap up this video. All right, guys, so that is what I have for you in today's video, just reviewing that Roku put option to the downside, getting about 40% using that previous day closing price as my rejection point. Starting off this trading year of 2022, my goal as of right now is to stay small, get some momentum behind me, get some wins under my belt, and then start to scale up over time. No one wants to go ahead and start a new year of trading with some big losses, scaling up when they shouldn't, especially in a market that has been relatively choppy. Now, the reason I bring this up is because I want you guys out there to be able to feel the same. Do not compare yourself to other people. Do not go ahead and see other big profits, you know, other big trades and feel like you have to do the same. You have to understand where you are along your trading journey and accept that and accept if you are someone that is willing to put on that risk. Now, as of right now, in this market, I'm keeping it small. I'm getting some quality trades under my belt and I hope to go ahead and scale up into the middle of this year. So just wanted to go ahead and say that we don't want you guys to get discouraged if maybe you're breaking even, taking small losses, even getting small wins. Keep it small. Keep it consistent. Over time, you will be able to scale up. So that is my video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to join the Discord chat where I trade live every single day, every single morning, make sure to check out the link down below. If you want to come and hang out in the pre-market live streams, make sure to press the bell down below so you are alerted every single time that I go live. Thank you guys for watching. Press that like button, subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.